Hello, I'm Matt and welcome to Badger Workshop. So, I've done it again. Well, I've done something I should have done a couple of years ago. Instead of messing around trying to get cheap table saws to work, just get a decent cabinet saw. So what I've gone for is the Axminster Craft one, which quite a lot of people recommended to me. I feel for me, working with cheaper saws has been a false economy, and I should have just got this in the first place. This came next day delivery, which I was amazed about, and it's incredibly heavy, which is a very good sign, I think. Axminster do produce very nice manuals with colour photographs for all the steps. The first thing it says is to attach the feet, but I've opted for this cabinet and sliding table, so I'm going to start with the cabinet. This is an optional extra, and they also do a stand, or you could just build your own. But what's the point of a cabinet saw without a cabinet? I've got my trusty bit of railway line to help me to hold it up, and then I can start getting this together. It all goes together with these Allen head bolts that go through, a washer goes on, and then a nut, and then it can all be tightened down. The smaller section is the back, so two side pieces can get bolted to that. And then an internal shelf can get dropped down into place. This gets held in place with the same bolts. It's nice that they've used the same nuts and bolts for everything, so you don't have to try and work out which ones to use. At the top and the bottom, it's got a couple of these support pieces and they just get bolted on the same. It has four adjustable feet that get bolted on. Here's the front, which I'm holding up the wrong way, and this has got a few tapped holes in it. Now I've had a few of these machine stands before and they're made of pretty lightweight steel. I thought this would be made out of the same stuff but it's a much thicker gauge of steel and when it's all put together it's got some serious weight to it. The door drops onto a couple of hinges and then it's got a star knob with a bolt to tighten it up. To stop any dust falling in, it's got this pan that goes on top. Now the saw needs to go on, and it does say you need two people to do this. And I have to say, it was incredibly heavy. The two bits now need bolting together. To make it a bit easier to line everything up, I'm going to take these side panels off, and both come off with four screws. Now I've got four big bolts that go up through the base, through that dust pan, and into the saw. So with the stand done and the secure together, I can look at the manual and start on the saw. It did come with all the tools, but I'd already got out the ones I needed for the base. The first job was to get the two handles fitted. So at the front is the raising and lowering of the blade, and on the side is tilting the angle. So it comes with a side extension, which is going to go on the right hand side. I work out which way round, and that hole at the back needs to go at the back. Some bolts and washers can go through the holes and then tighten down into the cast iron top. I'm only doing them thumb tight to start with. I want the wing and the cast iron top to be flush with each other, so I'm just going to clamp this straight edge to the cast iron top. Now at the front, I can push the extension up against the level and tighten the bolt up. I can then do the same at the back and the middle. The rear extension goes on the same way, lining these slots up with the mitre tracks. Two bolts go through into the cast iron top and then one nut bolt and washer join the two extensions together. I use the same method as before to get everything flush. This is the 100mm dust port. One side needs to go in the saw, the other on the outside. So you need to take them apart. Then they can be put on the saw and tightened back together. Okay. 
This hose needs to be attached to the bottom of the blade shroud and to that port we just installed. Now maybe I was being stupid, but I found this the trickiest part of the whole build. I ended up taking the blade shroud off because it was only a couple of bolts. Then I can install the hose, the clip, get it put together and get the other end attached to the dust port. The blade height has this locking knob, so I loosen that and then fully raise the blade. I can then get the insert plate removed and that's with some Phillips screws. With it removed, I can install the riving knife. There's a bolt that just needs loosening off and then it can be dropped into place and tightened up again. It has some grub screws that can be loosened off for alignment, but mine seem to be perfect. I've got the insert plate reinstalled and then the crown guard can go on. The guard has a dust port on it, so that has some flexible hose that goes on and it has a clip that can be tightened down. The other end of the hose goes onto the side of the 100mm dust port. Under the cast iron table there's already a couple of bolts, but a couple more need to be added to this extension wing. These are to attach the rail for the fence and it has four little cutouts that just slide onto these bolts and then they can all be tightened down. The fence itself now just hooks on and can be clamped into place. The last job in getting the saw put together is this little bracket that just keeps the hose out of the way. If you just bought the saw, that's it all done and ready to use but I've opted for the sliding table as well. So the first job is to get these couple of brackets put on the side and they just get bolted into place. Then on these brackets, some bolts and washers go through and then a nut goes on. These grub screws go through some threaded holes and these are gonna be for adjustment later. For some more adjustment, these longer grub screws go into these blocks and these get bolted on under the brackets. The rail for the sliding table can now get fitted, so you just need to twist those nuts around until they fit into this track and then it can be slid on. position then all the bolts can be tightened up. The table has a stop pin that needs pulling out and then the wheels can just be slid onto the track. Now the sliding carriage needs aligning with the cast iron top. I'm going to use the fence that came with it as a straight edge get that on the cast iron top and then I can see where it needs adjusting. I can loosen the bolts holding on these brackets and then wind up this grub screw until the sliding table is level with the cast iron top. Adjusting the tilt of the table can be done with those grub screws on the brackets themselves. The miter gauge goes on, gets tightened down with this locking handle. Then this post goes through and a washer and nut go on from underneath. The hold down clamp can then be put on this post and tightened down. The fence slides onto the mitre gauge. I get it on and then line it up so it just meets the blade and then I can get it tightened down. It comes with this flip stop that just slides onto the rail and then can be tightened into place. The last job is just to get some little protective caps on the end of the rail. I'm super pleased with this. It's much heavier and better made than I even imagined. 
and it feels like a proper grown up cabinet saw. So I'm going to use it for a month and then I'll come back in four weeks and show you some more features and what I think of it. If you want to have a look at this saw, I'll put a link to it and all the accessories down below. Thanks to my Patreons, thanks for watching, and please subscribe for more videos.